Hi, everyone. It is February 17, 2019. This tyrannical world is really closing down on us. Government permission to travel, authority to transport. When you go to the airport, did you know that you are you are being checked out and if you can get on that plane it is because your government has given you permission to get on that airplane authority to transport it's an I API system which allows for two-way communication in near real-time the airlines transmit the API message on a per person basis to the requesting authorities at the time of check-in while law enforcement agencies have the opportunity to decide whether a certain person is allowed or not allowed to board a plane by issuing a board no board message yes PNR API authority to carry authority to transport with respect to each passenger before allowing them to board any flight this converts travel from a right to a privilege which can be exercised only by permission of the police Wow what does API stand for? Advanced Passenger Information. And a PNR stands for Passenger Name Record. It's a permission system. It is passive surveillance to active government control and prior restraint. And it's in the works already. I'll get to that map in one sec. Let's see, what is this? Globalization and policy laundering of travel control. Why haven't we heard of this? Why has there been no debate about this? Oh, because so much is happening as we focus on the absurd political theater of red and blue, the red and blue teams. So there was an interview with the head of U.S. Customs and Board, uh, Border Protection, and it was published. And you can get to all of the information, the hyperlinks are right here. I put all of the links to the articles that I work from below in the description box, but this interview with the head of U.S. Customs and Border Protection published last month. This this was September 18, 2018, but this was dated just a few days ago, February 8, 2019. So, um, the interview provided an unusually revealing and disturbing picture of the expansion and globalization of surveillance and control of travelers. It also highlights the ways the policy is being laundered, laund I can't speak anymore, all right, uh, laundered through the rationale of compliance with international standards. It's actually United Nations, U.S. pushed, but, well, we're just complying with international standards. So how are they imposing this on so many different countries, claiming that they're international standards? We have to do this. Yeah, to avoid any domestic political debate in the U.S. or other collaborating countries. We are so in the New World Order already. Um, the Customs and Border Patrol Authority, the head of the Customs Border Patrol, said this. We have the entry exit mandate that 
Customs and Border Patrol was given in 2014 to ensure biometric exit is captured for anyone leaving the country. So they're collecting a tremendous amount of data and facial recognition data. This um, Customs and Border Patrol, the head, Mc, McAlien, L, Alien, McAlien, he is going further than the congressional mandate for biometric exit data. It's supposed to be limited to non-U.S. persons. You do know that we're not a country ruled by law. You do know that our government violates domestic and international law all the time. Okay. If international bodies can be pressured to adopt surveillance mandates, national policies can be represented as compliance with international standards, even if those standards were adopted at the behest of the U.S. and its collaborators. And that is what has happened. So, Mick Elian said, Two very important United Nations Security Council resolutions over the last two years, or two and a half years, uh, 2178 and 2396, both have focused on the need for that global capacity building to identify high-risk travel. What is this about? Well, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the OSCE, wants to and has been checking every airline passenger's background and sending airlines an authority to carry or authority to transport. You've got authority to transport that cattle before a passenger is allowed to board. OSCE spans the globe, encompassing three continents, North America, Europe, Asia. So this is ostensibly a private organization that works with the United Nations, but it gives this organization the ability to control the right to travel of nearly 8 billion people. The OSCE and the International Air Transport Association are working together to track every passenger. It's been collecting close to 50% of airline passengers' personal information since 2017. The United Nations plays an important role in creating this worldwide airline tracking program. December 2017, the United Nations Security Council unanimously adopted Resolution 2396, building upon previous res resolutions. And it calls upon member states to collect API and PNR information because 2396 was adopted under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter. Compliance with this obligation is mandatory for all member states. UN dictated. 48% of OSCE participating states have set up API systems. 31% PNR data. UN's involvement in creating a worldwide tracking system is made even more disturbing after a recent um, news article revealed that they hired Palantir to analyze their food program. The United Nations food program contains personally identifiable data of 90 million people. So why is the UN hiring Palantir? And why would they help to create a worldwide airline tracking program? 
Well, do you know anything about Palantir? Palantir. Palantir, software, technology, surveillance, predictive programming. Palantir has been selling its data, storage, analysis, and collaboration software to police departments nationwide on the basis of rock-solid security. Palantir secretly has been using New Orleans, New Orleans to test its predictive policy technology. And you know what? No one in New Orleans was told about this. It deployed a predictive policy uh, policing, sorry, policing system in New Orleans that even city council members did not know about. Wow. Provided software to a secretive New Orleans Police Department program that traced people's ties to other gang members, outlined criminal histories, analyzed social media, and predicted the likelihood that individuals would commit violence or become a victim. The program began in 2012 as a partnership between New Orleans Police and Palantir Technologies, a data mining firm founded with seed money from the CIA's venture capital firm. And the partnership was extended three times and no one in New Orleans knew that they were being spied on. Well, it's not just Chicago had their predictive programming and Palantir is all over the country, but there was another oh, city where I, and I can't remember exactly what city it was, but Palantir has patented at least one crime forecasting system and has sold similar software to foreign intelligence services for predicting the likelihood of individuals to commit terrorism. What is this? An interesting article on Palantir. Yeah. That's a co-founder. Carp. What's his name? Alex Carp, co-founder and CEO of Palantir Technologies. But who is the number one founder? Peter Thiel, Donald Trump's friend. Palantir has worked for years to boost the global dragnet of the NSA and its international partners and was in fact co-created with American spies, Palantir Technologies, which Thiel founded with Alex Karp, Joe Lonsdale in 2004. They sell its services to the U.S. government. The CIA itself was an early investor in the startup through InQtel the agency's venture capital branch, but Palantir refuses to discuss or even name its government clientele. Despite it landing a $1.2 billion contract with our government. No, we're not going to tell you who our clientele is, but you get to pay for it because you're an American taxpayer. Um, Palantir has helped expand and accelerate the NSA's global spy network, which is jointly administered with allied foreign agencies around the world. The partnership has included building software specifically to facilitate, augment, and accelerate the use of X-Key Score, one of the most expensive and potentially intrusive tools in the NSA's arsenal. X-Key Score is by the NSA's own admission, its widest reaching program capturing nearly everything a typical user does on the internet. Yeah, there's no way around this, this uh, surveillance world. I mean, it's not just, a, it, it's not just happening in our country. Um, and it's been, unfortunately, you know, look, <laughs> Trump is not stopping any of this. Okay, guys, Trump is not. He's friends with these people. He's just, he's, all right, well, 
X key score. You want to know what it collects? It collected communications not only not only does it include emails and chats and web browsing traffic, but also pictures, documents, voice calls, webcam photos, web searches, advertising analytics traffic, social media traffic, botnet traffic, logged keystrokes, computer network exploitation targeting, intercepted username and password pairs, file uploads to online services, Skype sessions, and more for the NSA and its global partners, which includes Palantir, Peter Thiel, Donald Trump's friend, X Keyscore makes all of this as searchable as a hotel reservation site. No problem. No problem. You can read more about Palantir. Sponsored by the CIA. This is the map. This is your your surveillance map of the world. The red, no system in place yet. Yet. Blue, an API system in place. The green, a uh, light green, the PNR system in place. And the green, we've got an API and a PNR system in place. Do you remember what API? PNR stand for? Well, just think about individual or persons. These are the systems that are collecting all the data, every bit of information on you when you go to travel. They do background checks on you. Did you know that this was happening? No. So, uh, Brazil, all of North America, uh, UK, France, Saudi Arabia, um, Australia, the five eyes countries for sure, um, Singapore, and uh, South Korea. A lot of uh, a lot of the world already has this system in place, and it was mandated by the United Nations. The red are the countries that still don't have a system in place, and the red, well, uh, you got uh, Norway, Sweden, uh, Belarus. A lot of the Stan countries, Afghanistan and Kazakhstan, uh, Israel, Syria, Iraq, Iran, no system in place. Africa, the entire continent, except for South Africa, that has pretty much become a communist country. Uh, yeah, this is happening, guys. So, you're New World Order, the tyranny, the surveillance, the Brave New World, 1984, it's all going along smoothly. It ain't stopping. License plate readers. See all those cameras all over the place? Everywhere we go, we are being tracked. Customer loyalty rewards programs used to convince the public to accept 9,000 private license plate readers. The die has been cast whether it is digital driver's licenses, digital license plates, license plate readers, or facial recognition cameras. Everyone from private corporations to law enforcement follows the same script. Offer Americans customer loyalty rewards programs in exchange for the loss of their privacy, surveillance, 
Politics and law enforcement regularly tout license plate readers as a necessary extension of public safety at the expense of our privacy. But now things have gotten really out of control. As a recent court's headline warned, in just two years, 9,000 of these cameras were installed to spy on your car. Alabama, talk about restricting travel. Well, if you don't pay your tickets, you don't have the money to pay your tickets, your, your fines, then you can't leave the state. They're issuing driver's licenses that are limited only to Alabama. Drive outside the state, well, you're driving without a license. Guys, this, uh, well, this is just the way, this is just the way of the world, and this is what is happening, so. No content with real-time crime centers, forcing businesses to spy on customers in real time. Well, now Baton Rouge Police Department uh, is using red light cameras to spy on motorists and giving people tickets if they go through the red light, but very often you'll get these tickets even if you're going through a yellow light. So what has been happening is that a lot of people are not paying those tickets and they're fighting them and they're winning. So if that happens to you, don't pay it, fight it. But these red light cameras are going, they, they will just be part of life. You know, they're limited right now to certain cities. This is going to be in every smart city, every aspect of your life, every inch of it, every breath will be controlled. That is the way of the world. Let me just bring your attention also to unsustainable single family housing. It's unsustainable single family housing. It's declared racist. UN Agenda 21, 2030 Agenda and New Urban Agenda Policies intend to end private property rights all together to flip capitalism and free enterprise into sustainable development. And this attack is intensifying throughout this country. Across the nation, city councils and state legislatures are beginning to remove zoning protections for single-family neighborhoods, claiming they are racist. They're racist, discriminatory, um, and it's designed to keep certain minorities out of such neighborhoods. Right. Okay. Government officials are calling for the end of single-family homes in favor of multiple-family apartments. Minneapolis, Minnesota. The city council is moving to remove zoning that protects single-family neighborhoods instead planning to add apartment buildings in the mix. Agenda 2030, Agenda 21, all of it is going along smoothly. And so many people are just sitting back thinking that somehow Trump is just going to return us to the country that we had decades ago. It's not happening. It won't happen. And for all of you who own private property, and you're still not involved in your local town council to find out what's going on, then you are going to be in for a shock one day. Um, the mayor, the mayor of uh, Minneapolis, the mayor actually said such zoning was devised as a legal way to keep black Americans and other minorities from moving into certain neighborhoods. Wow. So do you think if the people in Minneapolis, if they heard that, do you think that they would put up a fight? You would hope. Baltimore, Maryland, another one, the NA, uh, NAACP filed a suit against the city charging that Section 8 public housing causes ghettos 
because they are all put into the same areas of town. They won the suit, and now the city must spend millions of dollars to move such housing into more affluent neighborhoods. In addition, landlords are no longer permitted to ask potential tenants if they can afford the rent. <laughs> what? Okay. All of this is designed to shake up your stability, security, and it's all about bringing everybody down to the same level. You know, that socialist thing that, well, apparently a lot of Americans are going for. Or, or Oregon, not surprised, but Speaker of the Oregon House of Representatives, Tina Kotek, is drafting legislation that would end single-family zoning in cities of 10,000 or more. She claims there is a housing shortage crisis and that economic and racial segregation are, causing, are caused by zoning restrictions. Identical policies don't just simultaneously spring up across the country by accident. There is a force behind it. The root of these actions are found in fair housing policies dictated by the Federal Housing and Urban Development Agency, HUD, Today, Ben Carson, appointed by Trump, is instituting for the United Nations Agenda 2030 stacking packs. The affected communities have all taken HUD grants. There is a very specific language in those grants that suggests single-family homes are a cause of discrimination. HUD program called Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing, AFFH, the agency is taking legal action against communities that use discriminating zoning ordinances that discourage the development of affordable multi-family housing. Multi. That's the whole point. You will no longer have any privacy at all. The suits are becoming a widely used enforcement tool for the agency. To enforce its social engineering policies, HUD demands the following from communities that have applied for or taken these grants. Forces the community to complete an assessment of fair housing to identify all contributing factors to discrimination. These include a complete breakdown of race, income levels, religion, and national origin of every single person living there, more data collected they use this information to determine if the neighborhood meets a preset balance. So we don't have any freedom anymore to just move where we want to, associate with who we want to. No, we have our government officials deciding for us how we should all be living. Does this sound right to you? I hope not. Um, HUD demands a detailed plan showing how the community intends to eliminate the contributing factors to this imbalance. Americans who have grown up experiencing private home ownership as the route to personal prosperity must quickly learn of this thread. They must fully understand why cities like Chicago, Minneapolis, Baltimore, states like Oregon have suddenly announced actions to eliminate single family home zoning. Yes, it's sustainable. Single family homes are no longer sustainable. Now, to the frustration of these sustainability uh, bill lists, whatever, uh, the legal protection of private property rights and ownership have proven to be a roadblock for implementation. New York Mayor de Blasio best expressed the frustration in New York Magazine. This is what he said. What's been hardest is the way our legal system is structured <laughs> to favor private property. 
You got a communist in New York as a mayor, as well as a governor, but Blasio is a communist. Uh, I think people all over this city, of every background, would like to have the city government be able to determine which building goes where, how high it will be, who gets to live in it, and what the rent will be. Yeah, we want our governments deciding all of that. The immediate result of eliminating single-family homes and in turn destroying private property rights is to degrade the property values of the homes so many have so many have work to build for your average American, your ordinary American that has been uh, for most the only asset it's being taken away from you. It used to be called the American dream now it's labeled racism, discrimination, social injustice. Got to eradicate poverty by bringing everybody down to a level of poor. That is what is taking place. So it's interesting to note that as private property ownership shrinks under this misguided policies, under these misguided policies, so too does the nation's wealth. Sustainable policies are at the root of nearly every local, state, and federal program. Each step diminishes individual freedom, personal and national prosperity, and the destruction of the hopes and dreams of every American. And I will link below to American Policy Center. Tom DeWeese has been very active in trying to fight Agenda 21 2030, and you can go to the Articles tab and get an awful lot of articles about what is taking place. Uh, a lot of articles. And you can also learn about Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 on this site. And he is actively fighting HUD. All links are below. This is the way of the world now. Without the numbers, with, with the consent of the majority of Americans, because you do consent with your silence, willful ignorance, in action, this country is rapidly turning into a socialist, communist, surveillance, police state. It, you cannot deny it any longer. It is in our face. So we do have the consent. The majority of Americans, they don't want their freedom. And they don't want to own private property and they want to be poor. Wow, what a trip it is to live this time.